Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. This is the ISO GOAT here, back again for another quick video. Let me start this by saying I'm not a financial advisor, nor do I have financial experience whatsoever. Do not invest in anything solely based off my opinions or anything that I say in this video until you've done your own due diligence and your own research first. Never throw in more money than you're willing to lose, and also make sure you have a firm understanding of crypto before throwing in any kind of money. So this is going to be a slightly different video today. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on. You know, there's a lot of people that are like starting to second guess their, inve their investment. Like, oh, you know, I heard this is going to be a ripple killer. Hey, this is going to be an XRP killer. Oh, I heard, heard this is a scam. I heard it's going to zero. I heard Ethereum 2.0 is going to take over. I heard XPR is going to take over. I've heard Solo is going to take over. I've heard Corium is going to take over. I've heard Flare is going to take over. And, you know, what I, what I want to tell you guys is, you know, definitely do your own research too. Don't just rely on what a YouTuber says and what somebody is telling you. Make sure that you actually take the time for yourself, you know, invest in yourself. Take the time to actually research, you know, before putting out these, you know, there's a lot, of, we'll just put it this way. There's a lot of people propagating misinformation out there. So I just wanted to give you guys kind of a reminder in regards to some of the facts surrounding Ripple, uh, some other companies as well. Um, it's going to be a different approach today, but um, definitely make sure you read through the documents and make sure that, you know, you're not just relying on somebody else. That's, that's basically the whole point I'm trying to make, okay? You know, a lot of times people think things go out the window, and it's like, it doesn't have to go out the window. If you do your due diligence, you will realize that at some point you will become emotionless in regards to some of these things that are being spouted pretty much anywhere and everywhere. You know, you, you have FUD articles coming out literally daily, okay? And at this point, you know, if you don't feel comfortable in what you're invested in, then you haven't done enough research for yourself. That's just being honest, transparent, non-beat around the bush. I'm not going to sugarcoat. So, um, I did want to give you guys some, kind of some reminders in regards to uh, Ripple, the company. For those people that think it's a scam, it's going to go away, it's going bye-bye, whatever. You know, at the end of the day, you're entitled to your own opinion. Memberships of Ripple. It is the first ISO 20022 standard bodies member. It is a part of the Digital Pound Foundation, the Digital Dollar Project, the Digital Euro Association, the Open Payments Coalition, the Faster Payments Council with the Federal Reserve, Mojaloop, IMF High Level Advisory Group on FinTech, Global Payments Steering Group, Crypto Climate Accord, future partner of the World Economic Forum, and it also has three of its members listed directly on the World Economic Forum website. It's also mentioned by the IMF as well. The International Association for Trusted Blockchain Applications. Here's some facts about Ripple and XRP. XRP is now in 90% of XX markets. It was 4 in 2020 and is now in 40. Should tell you something. Ripple also, for those that don't know, they're going through a current lawsuit right now, which I'm not even going to get into the lawsuit. At the end of the day, that is literally theater at this point. We're watching a movie, grab some popcorn, grab some salt, grab some butter. Okay, just enjoy the show. Okay. They have $1 billion in cash. No debt. Sounds like something going away to me too. 95% of customers for Ripple are outside the United States. Just imagine once we have clarity inside the United States. Just a thought. The World Bank and World Economic Forum classify XRP and XLM as stable coins. XRP has been delisted by several exchanges, mainly in the United States. Now, a lot of people see this as a negative thing. I see it as a bottleneck to access. Obviously, if you do your own research, you can still purchase. Obviously, you look into that yourself. There are certain exchanges that have not delisted it. I'm sure at this point, most of you probably know where they are. Just as a thought, like I said, limiting access. I think it's for a reason. Every other nation on the planet sees XRP as a currency. Go figure, the United States supposedly thinks it's a security. There should be some red flags going off. So there's a lot of things going on in the world, okay? Obviously, you know, we're going through this whole transition phase, a huge transformation in regards to how we, you know, transact, trade finance, you know, everything's being revamped so that, that way it's more upgraded, it's more up to date, you know, it's not outdated, everything's faster, you know, cheaper, more efficient, you know, you want to incorporate these things into your business models. And right now we are at a transition phase, in my opinion, like I said, and nobody knows how long this is going to take, just being honest, like I said, so if you're not patient, it probably isn't for you. Just being honest, transparent, non-beater on the bush, I don't sugarcoat. 
Bitcoin. This is going to be kind of a little shift. <laughs> so Bitcoin, obviously it was groundbreaking. You know, it changed how we transact money. It's become a store of value today. Um, you know, it was revolutionary. Uh, obviously, Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever the gentleman or gentlemen's are, <laughs> uh, created it. You know, this was back in what, 2009, if I'm not mistaken? Cool. All power to it. Now, what I think is coming. There are some digital assets that will be cream of the crop, okay? There are 22,000 uh, cryptocurrencies at this point, and I've said this multiple times. At some point, I think the cream of the crop is going to rise to the top, okay? You know, right now, it's pretty much intermingling with all these, you know, pump and dumps, you know, these things that some guy made in his basement, you know, oh, I just want to hold this cryptocurrency because it has a cool name. Like, I think a lot of those are going to go away, go away. 95, 96, 97% of them. Just my thoughts, like I said, you know. And a lot of times, I, it's kind of weird because people think that Bitcoin is the end all be all, you know, and all power to it, all respect to it. It was really like, you know, groundbreaking, transformational, you know, it really changed like people's mindsets. People are investing in it. There's different, you know, companies that have it on their balance sheet. Cool, all power to it, you know, and I'm not here to knock it. But as I say in every single video, the first is not always the best in regards to anything. <laughs> Pretty much at some point, you're going to have to upgrade it. You know, there's going to be some kind of changes made to it. You know, you could look at the steamboat. You could look at the TV. You could look at the, the keyboard. You can look at the telephone. You can look at the, what else, uh, railroads. You know, a lot of things, like, have been upgraded over the years. Let's just be honest and transparent. CD players, just as an example. Who uses a CD player now? Like, nowadays, you can actually stream music literally at the touch of a button, <laughs> okay? And I think that, like I said, some of these digital assets that might be highly undervalued right now, utility is what I'm focusing on, and I'm not saying just specifically XRP, just as a heads up before somebody wants to come at me that way. Utility is going to matter. Utility is going to drive price at some point. Now, we don't know when that point is going to be, but in my opinion, it is coming. Okay, they are laying the groundworks for this in the background with a lot of these partnerships, you know, these associations like they are doing this while people are not paying attention. There are people sleep at the wheel right now, not paying attention to what's going on. And if you just follow the news and what you see on the media, they are not going to give you every single piece of the puzzle. A lot of times they leave out the important stuff or a lot of times these stories might be misconstrued. We'll just put it that way. Okay, so. Um, I want to compare it to the internet, and also AI. I guess we could look at AI too. So the internet came about in what 1970, somewhere around that time frame. Here's what I think is going to happen in regards to this digital asset space. The internet was literally adopted overnight, essentially. You know, obviously the governments and stuff used it first, and then they brought it out to the masses. Now we pretty much use the internet for anything and everything. It's literally the World Wide Web. Like you can access anything you want. You can just type it in Google, type it in Yahoo, type it in whatever, and you can pull it up. OK, it's literally that easy. And I think at some point, some of these digital assets will also be incorporated into our everyday lives. This is just my thoughts. Like I said, you don't have to share my opinion. Maybe I just, you know, think differently. Who knows? You know, I'm just thinking big picture in regards to this, you know. And, you know, I think one day we are going to wake up and it's going to surprise a lot of people. And I've said this ad nauseum several times. You know, I think it's just going to literally like that, in my opinion, like I said. But like I said, they can roll it out how they want to. All power to them at the end of the day. If you're invested in the right, right assets in regards to this new emerging technology and asset class, like I think you will be end up on top in regards to this. This is just my thoughts. Like I said, obviously we have CBDCs coming as well. You know, there's a lot of there's there's positives and there's negatives associated with it. Not even gonna lie to you. Straight to the point. Okay, but I think that this is a one of those uh, groundbreaking opportunities, kind of like the dot com boom. Um, I don't know if you guys were around for the dot com boom, but you know there was a lot of these technology stocks that you know a lot of people invested in, you know, and some ended up selling early, you know, some you know still held. Like you know these companies like Microsoft, you got Tesla, you got Google. Like you know if you literally just fast forward from that time frame to now, like a lot of those people are like wealthy if they still held some of these assets. This is just my thoughts. Obviously, you know, that's a span of what, like 30, 20, 30 years. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think this is all about patience. You know, this is just my opinion, like I said. And a lot of people don't want to be patient. You know, they wanted to be rich yesterday. And, you know, you wanted to be wealthy yesterday. I, sh I should have made money on this by now. You know, I've been invested since 2017. I've been invested since 2020. Oh, why can't I retire yet? And it's like, 
you know, people are so short-sighted and short-minded, and I think that's where the problem is, and that's why people are getting very impatient. You know, people are throwing in the towel. People are getting worried. You know, they're like, oh, I, I can't do it anymore, despite all the research that they've done into the company. And I, I would hope. I'm just assuming. You know, maybe not everybody researches. No problem there. Cool. But at the end of the day, if you are questioning anything or something that you see on somebody's YouTube channel, you know, even mine, please question me all day. You know, please fact check me. Make sure that you do your due diligence for yourself so that you are not shooting yourself in the foot in the future. That's all I'm going to say in regards to that, like I said. Now, when I go, when I talk about the dot-com boom, like I said, you know, obviously some people held the asset, some people dropped it off, not dropped it off, but, you know, sold it, whatever. Some people still hold, you know, and a lot of those people that bought back then would be very wealthy now. And there's people out there that are probably living with regret right now. And, you know, I don't want anybody to regret anything, like I said, but, you know, it's your life. Ultimately, it's up to you. Make the best decision for yourself, your family, your situation, you know, whatever. Do what's best for you. But I definitely encourage you to make sure that you are putting forth the actual effort and the time in order to study something, especially if it does interest you. You know, like this blockchain stuff interests me, like. That's why I'm like looking through stuff like constantly. Like people send me stuff. You know, it's, you got to find something. You got to find your niche, focus on it, and then you know, obviously blossom it from there, and make sure that you learn as much as you can about that, so that that way you become more knowledgeable about it. You know, and I think that you know, like I said, Ripple, I think is going to be a fintech that's going to be very huge in the future. And mark my words, you know, we're early now. You know, I know a lot of people are like, uh, you know, they're on the fence about it. Like, oh, I don't know if I like Ripple. I don't. I do. It is what it is. You know, at the end of the day, we're not here to you know persuade anybody i had somebody the other day hey persuade me to buy xrp i'm not the one i'm just gonna be honest with you i'm not the one only thing i can do is i can tell you hey you need to do some research at the end of the day if you have questions or concerns you can reach out to me i have no problem helping you out and if i can't help you out i will try to point you in the right direction just my thoughts you know and there's people out there there's a lot of people that think that you know wealth is supposed to just be handed to them like they they feel so entitled they feel i deserve to have this i deserve i should have had this yesterday you know but they don't want to put forth the time <laughs> and as soon as one article comes across about oh uh ripple is a scam ripple is this and that or stellar they're, they're uh you know they're a scam too or <laughs> you know it's crazy it's like they just flip the script like literally all everything that you've seen <laughs> just goes out the window and it's very like mind-blowing and mind-boggling to me just my opinion like i said um, but those people that are, you know, doing, taking the time and doing what they need to do in regards to this, shout out to you. You know, I think at some point this is going to change a lot of lives. Just my opinion, like I said, and I'm not just specifically talking about XRP, not just specifically talking about XLM, but, you know, the cream of the crop, digital assets, you know, I think at some point there will be some kind of boom, kind of like the dot-com boom um, for those that were around for that, where, like, literally you just see explosive growth. Explosive. Like, nothing you've ever seen before. That's just my thoughts. Um... And like right now, um, here's as an example. So with the dot-com boom, um, I don't know if you guys have heard of uh, Pets.com. Um, so I'm going to make an analogy with this. Uh, so Pets.com supposedly was going to be big, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then they ended up going bankrupt, etc. I think that's going to happen with uh, a lot of these banks and financial institutions that don't want to upgrade their systems um, and start utilizing some of this newer tech that's more cost-efficient gets their money from point A to point B, you know, you don't have to worry about your money disappearing, things of that sort. I think at some point they become irrelevant and it's going to be hard to catch back up to the other competitors, in my opinion, like I said. You know, I could be wrong, but, you know, I think if you don't adapt, you essentially die, if you want to look at it that way, you know, <laughs> short and sweet to the point. Um, same thing for Napster. That's another example. You know, like nowadays, now we have streaming services, you know, you can literally get it on your iPhone, your Android, you know, at the touch of a button, you know, you do a subscription, Hey, you know, so what, what happened to Napster? I think that's pretty much the, the transition phase that we're in right now. Um, and like I said, I think probably it's going to be a very quick flip over to the new system. As you guys have mentioned and I've mentioned, you know, there's a brand new financial system being built right now. Bricks is working on circumventing SWIFT. And, you know, I think that this is going to be a huge shift in regards to, you know, a lot of people in different countries, you know, hopefully for the better. I mean, I think once this shift happens, I mean, middle class is, you know, for people not paying attention, I I don't know. Supposedly this is going to obliterate the middle class. We shall see. I mean, there will be the have-nots and the have-yots, however you want to look at it. But, you know, I definitely recommend everybody take their due diligence and their time to do the research for themselves. Don't just rely on a post that you see, a, a YouTube video, uh, you know, 
do your due diligence. And at the end of the day, I'm not saying buy this or buy that. All power to you. I, I'm not. I'm not here to convince anybody. Okay. I just throw the nuggets out there so that that way you have it at your fingertips if you want to use it. I also post documents on my communities tab so that, that way I can you know help as many people as possible. You know, like I said, we can all look at these these documents and discer- use our own discernment. You know, at the end of the day, bouncing around different ideas. There's nothing wrong with that as long as we're respectful. Like there is no problem with that whatsoever. You know and. Like I said, there's going to be a, a time when this whole market just changes. It's not going to be driven by Bitcoin, in my opinion. Like I said, you know, not dishing, you know, whatever. But I think it's going to change. And I think utility is going to drive it, whether that's this year, whether that's next year, whether that's five years out, ten years out, who knows. But I know that I am not going to be living with regret because I am going to take advantage, hypothetically, of everything that's going on. Okay? Like, this is a, a very, like, game-changing technology, and it can really... It's going to create some millionaires and billionaires, I think, in my opinion, like I said. And if you were invested early enough, I mean, maybe trillionaires, who knows? <laughs> you know, I guess it all depends on where you see this technology going. Everybody has their own mindsets based off, you know, their experience, etc. But, you know, I, I definitely recommend that you do your own research. Um, so with that being said, I just wanted to leave you guys with one nugget of information. Uh, <clears throat> here we go. Imagine... Whoop, my bad, terrible timing. <laughs> Imagine playing Monopoly and never buying an asset or investments that generate income. Imagine you just went around collecting $200, giving your money to the rich and trying to stay out of jail. This is how most people live their life. I refuse to let it be me. That's all I got for y'all. Like, comment, subscribe, share this with some of you love. I will go out. Catch y'all in another video.